In this video, you're gonna make this fractal, which is the Barnsley Fern using Python. Now, everybody loves fractals, don't they? They're fascinating patterns. And it turns out that they're great patterns for computers to generate because you just take a point and you apply some kind of transformation to it and then you plot that point and then you apply another transformation and you plot that point and you do it over and over and over again and you get this pattern. So the transformations that are required to make the Barnsley Fern are these transformations. Now, what do I mean by transformations? Well, imagine a grid in two dimensional space, so like a chessboard, and you have an X axis and a Y axis, and you have numbers from zero to whatever going along the X axis and the same going along the Y axis, let's say zero to a hundred. You start off at the point zero, zero, and then you apply a transformation. So maybe you go three along in the X direction and then three along in the Y direction, and you end up at another point, and you, which is three, three, and you plot that point, and then you apply another transformation from three, three, which takes you somewhere else. You plot that point and you keep on going and you do it thousands of times. So we'll walk through the code now. I'm using Google um, Collab. So, you know, if you don't have Python installed, just go and check that out. I've put a link in the description. And we're importing NumPy as MP and matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. You can see that here. And then we need the functions. So let's just go to Wikipedia and I've put a link to uh, the Wikipedia page in the description. So these are the transformations. So you can see uh, there's a succinct way of writing them here in matrix notation. Uh, and if we take a look, so these are the functions that I was talking about. These are the functions that are going to transform the position, the current XY position into the new XY position. And here they are. So we have to somehow translate what's written here in this function notation into something that Python can understand. So that's the first thing we need to do. So we'll define our functions here. And that's what I've done. Now, I'm not going to code through this. You can see it here uh, and you can copy it if you like, but I'm not going to do this step by step. But here are the functions. So we've defined the functions here. And then I've created this list here, this variable, and it's just a list of our functions. So it's called functions. And then we need to set up how we're going to start plotting these points. So I've created a variable called points and it's equal to 100,000. So we're gonna plot 100,000 points. And I have initialized X and Y to be zero. So now we're gonna code through this little section here. So for I in range, point, so we're going to go from 0 to 100,000, what do we need to do? Well, first of all, we need to pick which function we're going to use, which function is going to be the function that transforms the current point. And if you look at the Wikipedia page, you can see that there is a probability associated with these functions. You can't just pick any old function. You have to do it in a certain probability in a certain proportion. And these are the proportions here. So function one, which relates to the stem, is only picked 1% of the time. Function two, which is related to the successfully smaller leaflets, and you can see that here, that's picked 85% of the time. And then the other two, the largest left-hand leaflet and the largest the right-hand leaflet, they're picked just 7% of the time. And there's a nice way of doing that. So I'll show you how to do that. So let's say function equals and then we're going to use something from numpy uh, and we're going to use from the numpy random library and we're going to use choice now what choice does is it will pick from this variable here functions which is this list of functions it will pick one from there at random and we can uh, specify what proportion, what probability we want it to pick them. So we can say we want the first function picked with a probability of 1%. We want the second function picked with a probability of 85% and the third function picked with 7% probability and likewise for the fourth function. So we've set that up now and now we can just say that x and y equals function x, y. So this function here 
will be one of the functions here, function one, two, three, or four, which we have uh, declared at the top here. So if we carry on now, we can, oh, what I ought to do as well, let me just say x list equals an empty list and y list equals an empty list because we've got to put our points somewhere so we'll put them into a list and there are other ways of doing this and I'm going to show you a nice way um, of doing this shortly a, 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 I think a better way but we'll start with this one so x y equals function and then so we just want now to append to our x uh, list we can append x and to our y list we will append y so we now have two lists that contain all of these points. So if we now uh, move to another cell, we can use matplotlib to plot these and we'll have x list and y list. And if we have that there. Let's just run this now. So we'll import NumPy, we'll run that one, and then our functions, function three. Oh, we haven't declared an x and y value there. So if we'll just put that in now. And oh, function four, that's not looking very good. We'll put that in there now. Okay, let's rerun that. So that should work, and then we will run those, name function not defined. So there we are, typo there. And now we'll just plot them, and that's what we get. And so that's our first attempt. But it doesn't look that good. So what we can do here is we can change the size of the marker to, let's say, 0.2. And if we do that now and we run it again, we will get a better looking fern. But we can improve on that even further. And the way I'm going to do that is a method that I saw used by Christian Hill, who is, uh, he wrote a book called Scientific Python. It's really good and he has a blog as well. So I, I would definitely recommend you have a look at that. So we're going to try doing this another way now using NumPy arrays and uh, treating what is generated as an image. So for this next bit, what I want you to do is we're going to add uh, at the top here where we're importing our various packages we're going to add import matplotlib.cm as cm. So this is just a color map for when we come to plot the image or show the image. Uh, and we're not going to change anything until this cell underneath our original plot. And here we're going to have two variables, width and height, and we're going to set those to 300. And then we're going to have another variable, which is fern image. Now this is going to be an empty NumPy array. And this is where we're going to be putting the image. We initialize x and y to be zero, and then we have the for loop. And the for loop is quite similar to start with. So we, we iterate over our 100,000 points and we pick our function at random according to these proportions here. Uh, and we end up with x, y values. Now this is where we have to do something a little different. Uh, because of the way that uh, image show works in matplotlib and the way images are indexed, we have to change where in this uh, dim two dimensional array, where we put the points. So we have to move them or we have to shift them a little bit. And that's what this ix and iy is doing. Um, it's recentering uh, the points and shifting them a little bit. Uh, and then what we're doing here is we're saying where we have these points, we want to set the value to each of these points to one so that they show up in the, uh, in the array when we plot it as an image. Uh, and then we'll just plot it. Now, here we're plotting this array and we're plotting all of the rows, but we're plotting them in reverse order because the image will appear upside down if we don't do that. And we want all of the columns. And here we're just saying we want it to be green. Now, when we do that, 
and it will take a little while because we have quite a few points. This is the image that we get. And I think that just looks a little bit nicer than this plot up here. Now, I said one at the beginning, one of the key things was the, uh, the probability with which we choose the functions. So I just wondered what would happen if instead of having these probabilities as they are here, what would happen if we just had them all the same? So let's just make them all 0.25. So there's an equal probability of picking any of these functions. And if we do that up here and then plot what we get, it'd be interesting to see what it looks like. And you see, it's not quite the same. So those probabilities are really quite important. So I hope that's been useful. You've learned a little bit about NumPy, a little bit about fractals. Do read up on the Barnsley Fern because it's uh, very interesting. And as you know, the link to the Wikipedia page is in the description.